Welcome to the Potter Discussion. Welcome back to the Potter Discussion. This is episode 88, and on today's episode, we will be discussing awfully convenient plot holes in the Harry Potter movies and books. Let's do this. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Potter Discussion. Today we are going over some of the most convenient plot holes in the Harry Potter story, and there are so many, so we should just get right into this. Before we start, I will remind you that there's two links, the SpeakPipe page link to send me a voice submission, and the Google form is still open. Just click those two links down there to send me any questions, comments, topics, Quizmaster questions, or your best joke to me directly, and and if you want me to feature it on the show, I will. So let's just dive right into this. And we are kicking it off with number one, Harry getting Snape's textbook. Okay, this one was a little too, you know, it just happened to be there. So Snape is the half-blood prince in this. I don't know, spoilers, but it is true. And Harry and Ron decide to go into the Newt's class for Professor Slughorn and potions. And they get there and Harry says, sorry, I don't have a book. I wasn't uh, prepared to go into this class. And Professor Slughorn... Slughorn says, that's fine, just go in the cabinet, and what do you know? (laughs) The one book that Harry could use to find out the true motives of the Dark Lord just happened to be lying there in the cupboard. Ron gets the nice one, and Harry gets the old one, but, (laughs) okay, this is just, this one is so ridiculously convenient and that is quite literally one in a million i mean just think about it harry found the one thing that snape left from school he put all of his knowledge into that book he put his heart and soul into potions in the dark arts and it just was left there and harry potter just decided to pick it up and harry seems to be everywhere with this but he just is everywhere here he always gets the book he always gets you know the one thing you need to do that one important job to complete the task to defeat the darkest villain to ever exist that thing is just way too over exaggerated in the harry potter books and movies for that matter where harry just magically gets the right thing and he's always the smartest always the fastest always the strongest and it just happens to be that way and it might be because the main character has to be somewhat capable but it might also be because Harry is the main character and he needs that strength and he needs that speed and smarts. She gave Harry too much. That was way too much of strength and smarts and luck. Luck is really the one I left out there. Luck is such an important part of how Harry (laughs) defeated the forces of evil and uh, what do you know, he just happened to find the book that year that allowed him to get potions, Felix Felicis, get the memory from Slughorn, you know, do all those things, and it just happened to be that one book in that one place at the one time, and with the one person who was capable enough to do it, main character, so all these things just make this big ball of why, this big expanse of plot hole, just 100% pure plot hole of this entire scene, this entire thread of story so little strange for harry to have found this but he did and good did come out of it but it might not be the right kind Coming in at number two, we have Voldemort getting sighted at the Ministry. I think everyone can agree with me here. If this happens in the fifth book and movie, 
the ministry just happened to come into the ministry and see the dark lord who returned. So, for those who don't know, in the fifth book, Voldemort and the Death Eaters had a duel with the Order of the Phoenix, Harry and his friends, and it was going pretty well, I think. The Order, the Order of the Phoenix definitely won, but Sirius Black was unfortunately killed by Bellatrix. Harry runs after Bellatrix, shooting spell after spell, and then Voldemort arrives, and he duels with Dumbledore, and then he goes inside of Harry and goes, you will lose, old man, you're a fool, which was like totally comical and amazing to watch, it was so funny, <laughs> I find the cruel scenes funny, just don't, don't ask questions, and then the ministry just comes out of the fireplaces, maybe they were called, maybe an alarm going off, but they just happen to show up, and uh, what do you know, Voldemort's just standing there, saying, you're a fool, Harry Potter, and you will lose, and then, <laughs> sorry, it's just these, like, classic Voldemort scenes, I cannot get over the fact that they are just so ridiculous, who would, you know, commit a serious felony, and then just stand there and wait for the authorities to arrive, that's something you don't do, but... <laughs> Voldemort did it. He did it, all right. And, like, talking to Harry, giving Harry his evil plan, as all the villains do, giving them time to come and rescue their friends. And that's just something that every single villain does. But with Voldemort, it was so much worse. Because Voldemort just stood there and waited. He literally waited for the ministry. And maybe it was because he wanted the ministry to see he was alive. Or maybe it was because he want to strike fear in the hearts of everyone, which is probably the same reason. But personally, I think the best option for Voldemort would be to just get out of there and not be seen, because Fudge and Dumbledore were really going head to head. There was some friction there, because Fudge didn't want to accept that Voldemort was alive. But because Fudge saw Voldemort, that means that Fudge now knows, and he is for sure going to say, all right, Voldemort's alive, people. Get your guard up. But if Voldemort wasn't seen by the ministry, then Dumbledore and, and the minister would have been still rubbing heads, which would mean that the magical world would still be in turmoil. And that is really good for Voldemort, because Voldemort then can do whatever he wants. There is no a lie in front. There is nothing. The, everyone is trying to do different things. And in that case, I think Voldemort would have won. It's these little things that just add up to something that you can never ever redo in the sense that Voldemort was seen and the ministry knew that Voldemort was alive and then they told the world Dumbledore and the minister decided to work together and I know it didn't really last very long because the minister resigned of course but even then it still was a very big mistake on Voldemort's part to be seen maybe on purpose maybe not by the ministry and in doing so <laughs> really not doing a good job in concealing his aliveness to the world. Now for number three, who owns the Elder Wands? It sounds like a really weird question to ask, especially after all that happened, but it's true. It's a legitimate question. Who owns the Elder Wands? After Harry snapped it in half and threw it into the void, you might say, no one owns the Elder Wand, but death is still a thing, and this is kind of, I know I'm encroaching into uh, theory territory, but I am going to say... If death still exists when Harry destroys one of the Hollows, death is going to find a way to make another Elder Wand. And it sounds crazy, and I have tears in my eyes from the olden days, but I think that's a very, very big possibility that the Elder Wand is still existing. It's still alive. And... Although I do think that snapping it in half and throwing it down a cliff is a suitable way to <laughs> get something out of your hands. But for the Elder Wand, really, it's not. So even if Harry didn't, there would be so much going on. So let's just try to, try to think of our situation here. So, 
from the beginning. Okay, so Dumbledore has the Elder Wand, and he is disarmed by Malfoy. Snape kills Dumbledore, who has the Elder Wand. In this case, it is Draco. But then when Voldemort takes the Elder Wand from Dumbledore, he doesn't have it because it's Draco's. It's not Snape's, it's not Voldemort's, it's Draco's. So the wand isn't working right for Voldemort, so what does Voldemort do? Severus, you were the one to kill Dumbledore. And as we all know, I must kill the previous master of the Elder Wand. You know, that part. <laughs> so, then Voldemort killed Snape in pursuit of the Elder Wands, but surprise, surprise, it didn't work because it's Draco. Draco was the true master of the Elder Wands. Then, Harry disarms Draco. So, now Harry is the master of the Elder Wands, and Voldemort keeps going with, without knowing this, and the wand is not working for Voldemort. Of course, it is functioning as a wand, but not really. And Harry has Draco's wand. This is so confusing. No, no, Draco's mother's wand, because that's what he took. No, it's Draco's wand. <laughs> I just, There's so many faces there. It is Draco's wand, because I thought that Harry, um, Harry disarmed Draco, then Draco, then Harry took Draco's wand, but that was Draco's mother's wand, because Harry took Draco's wand in Malfoy Manor. If you didn't follow that, basically, Draco is using his mother's wand, and Harry is using Draco's wand because, you know, disarmed around the Malfoy Manor. So that's what's happening right now. But it's really confusing now, because is that what happened? You might say, yeah, sure, but it's not. I'll explain. So, for the Elder Wand to pass through owners, the previous owner has to die. Did Draco kill Dumbledore? No. No, he didn't. Did Snape? Yeah. Yeah, Snape did. And for the Elder Wand to pass ownership, it has to be acquired the same way its master acquired it. So, for example, Snape killed Dumbledore, Snape has to be killed. And in that sense, Voldemort had the right mind. In no, <laughs> in no, no rule book does it state that if you disarm the owner of the Elder Wand, you will become the master. How is that even possible? But that means if anyone disarms anyone, they get the master. Of the, they are the master of that person's wand, which makes no sense. And even if that isn't true, how is disarming killing? That makes no sense. Disarming is not killing in my book. So. This whole thing just makes no sense, absolutely no sense for the Elder Wand. There's questions like, who owns it now, and all that kind of thing. But I think we should just <laughs> not addle our brains with this and move on. Number four, we have if just one person, unresponsible, got their hands on a time turner, the world would fall apart. Time is one of those things that can't be messed with. I mean, if, if you're watching Loki, you'll know that time can fall apart. I recommend that show. It's amazing. <laughs> so... Time is a really one of those things where if you do something that is like one thing that is wrong everything falls apart. So if you've seen any time movie, any time show, just your brain is somewhat logical, you'll know that doing one thing can really affect how the timeline goes. No, no, we'll just start over from there. We'll just start over. And coming in at number four, we have if just one person unresponsibly got their hands on a time turner, the world would fall apart. If you're watching Loki, you'll know that time is really delicate, and if one thing goes wrong, it all falls apart. Totally recommend that show. It's amazing. So, time is one of those things where if you go back in time and just change one thing, everything just collapses. The butterfly effect is real, folks. <laughs> so, it, just think about it. If you go back in time and do something that will majorly change your life, 
it's gonna have a huge effect. I don't know, major and huge means the same thing, but that's the point. If you do something to yourself in the past and you go back to the present, anything can happen. Your friend could be your enemy and you could live in a completely different house. So it's just these things that are so small lead up to things that are so big. You have this one course of action and you follow that course very specifically and if one thing just completely goes off the rails what are you going to do everything is going to be shifted and your entire life course is going to be blown off so that's the logic of it but for harry potter there is such a web of destruction with harry potter so Let's say one person got their hands on a time turner and it was a death eater. They went back in time and killed Harry before he was even born. What would happen? Well, the Weasleys would most likely all be dead. I'm sorry. Voldemort would not have gone for Harry, would have gone for Neville. And Neville would have been the Harry Potter of the universe, but it would have been very hard because Neville isn't exactly magically capable in the first couple of movies. So that would have been tough and everyone's morale would have not been, you know, exactly exciting. And maybe without Harry there, they might have lost the war and that meant that Snape would never have helped Dumbledore probably would have st um, stayed a Death Eater and Dumbledore would not have enlisted the help of Snape which means he would have stayed the regular headmaster with no dabbling in the dark arts which meant he would not have a, a um, spy on the other side to get information which then would mean they would have no intel and no way to inject false information into the Death Eater circle, which then, I know, then that would mean that they would lose. And I hate to say it, but if it was a battle between good and evil, I think evil would win. That's just because if there are no spies, no morales, no love protections, no sacrificial love things, I think Ava would just because they are malicious and conniving and scheming and they play dirty. They don't exactly go for the fair fight. They go for the fight they can win. And with the numbers they have and the way they got there... Unfortunately, the evil people would win. So, a completely different world if just that one person got their hands on a time turner. Now, if it was a good person, it would be a better effect, but still a very large one. If, for example, Harry got his hands on a time turner, went back in time, and killed Tom Riddle, the father of Voldemort, then Voldemort would never be born. And that would be quite the shocker... But then you ask yourself, how would that even work? Someone else could easily take up the mantle of a Voldemort figure. And even then, they would do stuff completely differently. They would ch treat their people, even, so different from how Voldemort just functioned his army. So, it would be such a big effect for just one person to make a big decision with a time-turner. And if I was someone with a time-turner... I would just put it away and I would never touch it again because that stuff is dangerous. So, coming in at number 5, we have Ollivander's ingredients are way more expensive than the actual price of the wand. It's basic business here. If you make a product, you want to price it higher than how you made it. But Ollivander doesn't seem to do that. Alone with Hagrid, we can tell that the unicorn hair costs uh, somewhere around, maybe was it like 17 or 18 galleons a strand? That's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. And Ollivander charged Harry, what, nine galleons for his wand? That's the only metric we have. They don't really line up. But I don't know. I don't know how Ollivander is functioning. But we might have a couple guesses here. And a plot hole doesn't mean something that, that doesn't exist. It's just something that we don't have. So if we can put in the pieces here, that would be pretty cool. So what is Ollivander's secret? He might get donations. That was my first thought, that he gets donations from other people because he is a wand shop, of course. The only wand shop in Britain. And families would just donate a guy in or two a year just to keep him going. And, you know, if a million families does that, 
That's a lot of money. It's not a million, of course, maybe, you know, four or five thousand, but still, that's a lot of galleons and quite the abundance and enough to keep his business going. Another thing I thought of was maybe it's, it's like a generational wealth kind of thing where, you know, since like 382 BC, if he's been making one since then, I think he might have quite the generational wealth built up because if he started in 382 BC, his family started then, he would probably be charging more back then just because, you know, pricing wasn't exactly the same. So he would be making so much more and then he might have almost close to a million galleons. If the prices were what we think they are that long ago, and if so, that means Ollivander is well worth the nine galleon price, which is quite low for a magical wand that costs maybe 30 to 40 galleons to make alone. So that is another one of those crazy things with wizard pricing. No one knows what's going on with this wizard wizarding, you know, rentals and buying and all that kind of thing. It just makes no sense because Ollivander, he has to pay rent. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna assume anything just because nothing makes sense in the wizarding world. But from basic logic, I think we can gather that some he's somehow getting extra money, and it might be from donations, maybe from grants from the ministry, it might be from something along those lines, but he isn't getting it from his customers. So that's part all I think we're gonna have to have to sit on for a second. If you can, if you have your guesses, maybe you know, please tell me in the show notes those two links, speak by page and Google form. Click those, it only take two seconds. I would love an answer because I don't know. I would love to know. So please tell me down there. Another one of Harry Potter's mysteries that unfortunately I don't think we may never find the answer of. But we can keep searching and that is exactly what we are going to do. At number six, we have Fred and George didn't see Pettigrew on the map. So if you're a little confused here, I'll explain. Peter Pettigrew uh, escaped to Hogwarts in the, well, rather from Hogwarts in the third year. But before that, in the first and second, he was sleeping with Ron in his bed every single night in his rat form. And if I'm not mistaken, Fred and George just so happened to possess a map, the Marauder's Map, that can tell everyone exactly where every single person is in Visibility Cloak, Podge's Potion, even Animagus aside, Pettigrew should have shown up on the map. And Fred and George didn't see a thing. Why? Why? In his brother's bed every single night for two years. No one saw a thing. This is one of those things that you kind of have to accept and move on from because there is no way that Fred and George Weasley didn't see this a clear, it was clear, so clear that this random person was, well, not random at all. And that just makes it even more confusing. This totally not random person was sleeping in their brother's bread, brother for crying out loud for two years. I can't ever agree. I can't get over this. Two years of this, and I just don't know what they're thinking, but somehow this works. I mean, I think we're going to have to give this to plot convenience, because at some point, plot holes becomes plot convenience. So, maybe they just don't want to look at Ron for the Marauder's Map. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know at this point. So, for this one, I think we can pretty much say plot convenience. Woo! Plot convenience is so amazing. But for this one, it's definitely interesting to think about how Fred and George had the Marauders map for so long, so they had the inside scoop on so many things, and this should have been one of them, clearly, but it wasn't. And it's just another mystery of Harry Potter. There are so many different things that could have happened but didn't, and this is one of them. I think we're going to have to say that this is something we will never know. In addition to the Ollivander... This is a mystery that may never be solved. The Marauder's Map is so confusing. This might just be maybe the Marauder's Map thought it was the same person. All in all, the Marauder's Map is something that we will never understand. And maybe Fred and George overlooked it. Maybe they didn't look at the map at night. But for the, whatever the reason is, Pettigrew stayed unnoticed. <laughs> And 
and our final plot hole of the day. Why didn't James or Lily become the secret keeper? I mean, this feels so simple, but it is not exactly executed. So James decides, you know what? Peter's a great friend. Let's give him the opportunity to be our trusty secret keeper. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? And I know they're great friends, and they probably thought it was a good idea, you know, to trust a friend and be nice and all that kind of stuff, but why? How would that ever work? How would being and giving someone else the secret keeper role be better for them than having one of them do it? I mean, it sounds kind of weird, but they have an existing curfew. The potters have to be in by seven or the Dark Lord will come for them. That's something that they can't really overlook, and it is a natural protector of their secret. Because if, say, for example, if Lily became the secret keeper, they would just always stay uh, inside at night, and the uh, Dark Lord can never come for them, they can never find their house. But if Pettigrew goes, yep, it's over there, then boom, Voldemort knows he's going to their house. So you can never just give someone else this huge responsibility and call it good. You have to do some planning after that. But whatever they did, they must have had a good reason for it. And they did it. It ended in tragedy, but that was the best they could do at the moment. Okay, that just about wraps up this episode. If you have any questions, comments, or topics that you would like to hear on the podcast, definitely send me an email. My email is thepotterdiscussion at gmail.com. That is thepotterdiscussion at gmail.com. If you have any questions, comments, topics, Quizmaster questions, or jokes, please use those two links in the show notes below. I have a SpeakPipe page link to send a voice submission or a Google form to do some text. If you could just scroll down on your podcast app of choice, tap those five stars, or even leave a written review. That could help me out more than you could ever know, and it helps other listeners find the show. As always, use information to your advantage, and I will see you later.